So now that we've created prefabs and we know how to instantiate them, we can now look at applying textures to those prefabs. Before, when we had the whole environment built out, if we wanted to change something after the fact, we'd have to go and manually drag and drop the shaders on everything. But now, since you have prefabs, all you have to do is change the textures on those few prefabs and everywhere they're instantiated will now have uh, those textures. So just expand the um, prefab to its individual components. And now here you'll notice the textures folder that I mentioned in the previous video. The reason for this is that I think it's important to realize what you can and cannot do individually. I am not an artist and I never will be. So it doesn't make any sense for me to um, try to come up with graphics that I know simply aren't going to be aesthetically appealing. So in this case, I went to the asset store and bought some pre-existent assets. That's completely legitimate. There is no reason not to do that. So it's important to know your limitations and it's important to know what you individually can and cannot do. So um, I know you'd probably like to see uh, a tutorial about making materials. Bottom line is I'm simply not talented like that. I'm not artistic, so I really can't create great looking textures. But again, um, if you're serious about the project, you could reach out to people, reach out to whoever it is, whether it be 3D models that you need or textures that you need, and commission them for it. So, um, or like I said, you can go to the asset store and uh, make pre and use pre-existing ones. So it's pretty simple. You just click on the object, and then you just drag and drop the material. And we're going to use wall 09. And it's that easy, just overwrite it. And now once you've done that, you can just drag and drop this and put it onto all the individual ones. And you can see that it's um, an arrow and not an X. So that way you know it's working. Now we expand the other one and do the same thing. And don't forget that this top one, even though it shows all of them, this is actually um, an object in of itself. This is the cube M. So make sure you drag and drop onto that. Drag and drop onto that. Now I didn't do the posts, the columns. They're going to be a different texture. So let's use... Click on post. And I believe we we're going to use this one. And so now we can just drag and drop onto the other posts. Just like that, you've textured any part of your environment that uses these two prefabs. So this here doesn't use them, so this will still be white. But even that is easy enough to fix because you can just delete the pre-existing ones. Um, maybe I'll do that between videos since it's just busy work, but you can just delete these and just drag and drop the prefabs in here if you really want to, or go into the code and make this be uh, generated at the start. So already you can see how much darker they are in the background there. 
And now it's looking more like a legitimate game. And certainly um, even this could use more, I won't say detail, but more polygons, more um, objects, because the post just kind of sits there in the bottom. The post could have a uh, like a base to it. I'm not going to do anything to the ball itself because I still think that I'm going to have a lesson where I replace that with an actual model and not just the uh, an orb. So actually, maybe we will do a couple. So uh, block no pit, and we just have to move it to where one is right now. The first one, I believe, was at zero, zero. So zero, zero, zero. Yep. And again, like I said, you can either do this by hand like this, or you can just put it into um, the uh, script. And let's just take care of our last two objects as well. So using that. That. Okay, so... Conversely, like I said, you can do that in the script. So we could do let's grab these two. So this one we said was zero zero zero. And then it would be Zero, zero, four. Eight. Ten. So that's the first four.
Now at that point, I believe everything will be taken care of. Except this one's a pit one. So I want to make sure we don't delete the pit collider, which we did not. And we want to make this BB pit. Actually, no, this one was fine. It's the next one. I think this one's extra. There we go. So just like that, um, you now have a fully textured uh, environment, and Sony it looks much more like a real game. And then you just uh, you come up with the textures for your coins, come up with the textures for your um, for your uh, obstacles. And this wasn't a very long video and a lot of busy work, so let's do one more thing. If you want to, like, hide what's in the distance, okay? Like we said, do that, you're going to be loading things, loading objects as the game progresses. Um, years ago, Silent Hill did something really interesting. The very first Silent Hill, and that is they had this fog covering the area. It both worked as uh, part of the story and the atmosphere, but it was hiding a limitation of the system. Uh, at first it was believed that it was due to the draw distance, and yet there's other games with the draw distance. Reason for it is apparently it wasn't so much the draw distance, so much as the speed of the loading of assets. And so there would be like a lot of pop-up, and I guess they didn't like um, the way that may it, it really broke the immersion. It really broke the, uh, the kind of tension they were trying to build, because you just saw these objects popping up because they were so slow. And so the uh, fog would cover the fact that the stuff was loading in the distance. So that's one of the things that we've mentioned is about when stuff is being loaded. Well, if you've got like a fog covering up the area, then it won't be as evident that something is appearing back there. So let's go to game object, particle system. Let's call this fog. And again, this is just going to be like a, a quick one. I'm not going to do a full breakdown of how I'm going to do this. So let's increase the base. Power up the top. And rotate it towards the screen. Zero. And we will increase the size. Reduce the speed. Increase lifetime. Increase max particle. Increase emission. Now the key is to make it not too thick, but thick enough to cover up the fact that you've got all these individual uh, dots. This is probably a little bit too deep. So let's do that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we attach it to the camera. So it's going to move with the camera. So that way it's not the fog. The fog is a fixed distance from the camera not a fixed distance in the um, background because then it would keep getting closer. So let's put this at... This is too high. This should be like, say, 3. Sounds not right, though. I'll use this all the way at 9x, so that's pretty Way, 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 way there. Okay, then 
There we go. So the fog was rolling in, but we weren't pre-warmed. So it's already there. Move it out a little bit further. There we go. So now you have fog. Uh, it needs to go out more because that edge, we don't want to see the fog appearing. It just should come in off the side like that. Let's move it up a bit now. Okay. So it is a bit thick though, and let's tweak the color. Let's make it like a very light bluish. Actually, going to make it a darker blue because I want to set transparency. There we go. So now you got this bluish fog. It's probably moving a little too quickly, but as you can see, it's a fixed distance from the camera, so it moves out. So your choice if you want to have that, that's not going to really function if, uh, affect anything, but at least it cuts off that... Um, uh, cuts off the distance so you don't just see this infinite um, draw distance and let's slow it down a little bit more there we go and now you can just play with how thick you want it to be uh, you can do that partially through um, the um, alpha yeah I'll leave it like that because like I said at a certain point it's purely subjective and um, I think that'll do it for this lesson then so I think we're getting towards the end of this project um, about the only thing that would be left would be to replace the orb with a more legitimate character um, maybe add a jump ability and if you want there to be enemies that you have to fight who come at you making it a little bit like a first person shooter or a third person shooter rather then maybe you could give like just a basic fire ability so um i'll leave it up to you guys if there's anything else you want to see just leave it in the comments